I started producing in the 80s, so that's why this piece of gear is very nostalgic and near and dear to my heart because I had an original unmodified Alesis HR16. And this is a modified Alesis HR16. It's circuit bent. So the original Alesis did not have any of these, pop, any of these uh, insert holes here, none of those LEDs, these switches. Um, it's a pretty basic machine. I mean, they really just left this wide open. I don't know what it was. I don't know, you put your drink on it, or I don't really know. But this was really part and parcel to the sound of my early productions because it was pretty much one of the only drum machines I had. So this thing had digital samples in it, and it was better quality than some of the other drum machines that had come out at the time, and pretty easy to use, really, relatively speaking. Mine eventually stopped working at some point and probably just ended up in a garbage heap, which I'm sad about now. I probably should have never thrown it out. Because it's circuit bent, these inputs have wiring going to them that are basically wired wrong to the, to the main boards inside. And when you take one of these fancy pins that my Schwaminess one is holding for me right now, and you put them in one of the sockets, it basically completes an electric circuit, which then allows whatever modification that's running through that to complete, and then it kind of whacks your sound out, which you're gonna hear in a minute. So here's a, here's a simple pattern. This is kind of exactly what the HR16 sounds like in its native environment. So there's no modifications there. Now, this modification, which is just simply pitch, when I put this in and start playing with the pitch knob, you'll instantly hear uh, what that does. Now, more fun happens when you start inserting these pins into the circuit bent inputs. So with the same loop. The other good thing is that it does have MIDI in and out, so I can drive other analog or MIDI um, associated things with it, which is pretty awesome. It's got four outputs, so I can assign these different sounds out different outputs and record them. And then there was an old school tape in and out, which actually allowed you to save your settings to a tape machine, um, which I never did. So how I'd go about creating a beat on this thing, it's pretty easy, and this is typical drum machine 101. I have a blank pattern here. It's doing absolutely nothing. I, I blanked it out. So I'm going to turn the metronome on. If I can just find the uh, menu. And that gives me a metronome. And so I can put this thing in record. There's my click. Here's your sounds. These pads, velocity sensitive. So the harder I hit it, the louder the sound is. So you can do kind of dynamic uh, drum performances with it. So let me record a pattern. So thank God it has quantization features so you can play pretty sloppily, um, like I usually do and it fixes it for you, so it puts it kind of in perfect timing, and you can change those settings, obviously. So now let's... I'm going to take these two sounds and add some embellishments over the top, so I'll record over the top of what I just did. So there you go. There's my pattern. Let's change the tempo. Uh, let's ramp it up a little bit. So that's fairly unexciting. And then we get into circuit bending land. 